I'm really excited to talk about the Sativa Min blend. It's one of the blends in the Soul Vital drink, which is one of the four core drinks. And it's um, honestly one of the core drinks for me um, as well. As a, It's a blend of chlorophyll, and then you've got the Sativa Min blend, which we think of um, also as plant minerals. And then there's that blend, the adaptable blend of six adaptogens. So we're going to talk about that Sativa Min blend part of it. And the Sativa Min blend contains four different herbs, Avena Sativa, Nettle, Burdock, and Dandelion. So um, when you think about these herbs, most people think about them in terms um, I'm having trouble advancing slides again, Greg. Thank you. Um, most people think of these herbs in terms of how they help your body, and they're classified, and particularly a venus sativa and uh, uh, nettle as nervines. And, and so I thought, let's take a second and just talk about, for those of you who don't um, have a lot of familiarity with these terms, what is a nervine? And so a nervine is something that affects or supports your nervous system. We're going to talk a little bit about what that really means when you think about the nervous system. So nervines will help relax the nervous system. It will help reduce stress on the nervous system. Um, and, and then, of course, your experience of stress is also reduced. Well, they will help cramping. They will help tension. So they're antispasmodic. They'll help nourish the tissue of the nervous systems. So things like uh, veins are, uh, that are close to nerves, nerve endings, synapses between nerves, uh, et cetera. Um, when, when nerves in your brain communicate with each other, that is dependent on chemical exchanges, particularly between minerals like sodium and potassium. So they're critical for communication in the brain. And, uh, you know, every psychology 101 student learns how calcium exchange happens in the brain and how that is critical uh, to nerve communication. So that's one example of how a nervine can help support nutrition, uh, nutritionally support nerve functioning. So nervine tonics can be used in a number of ways. You can have overall long-term help that would indicate daily use of these tonics. And so I'm listing some of the nervine tonics. These are herbs that are, in, that are considered to be nervines and considered to be tonics. So if you remember, a tonic is something that you can take daily, forever, non-toxic, overall helps the body in usually a fairly gentle way, but very, very restorative and helpful. And so the some of the nerves listed as a nervine tonic are a venous sativa, which is in the vital, a copa monieri, which we spoke about earlier this year, that's in the ProBioIQ, St. John's wort, which we um, unfortunately reduce in our minds to thinking of it as just for its antidepressant effects, although there's a wide range of things that St. John's wort will do, and that's why it's kind of more considered a tonic. Um, and then Damiana, which is also considered a nerve tonic. Damiana is kind of special because it sort of fits into all three of these categories. There's the nervine relaxants. They're not the same as a sedative. So a relaxant is something that helps the nerves work better, relaxes the muscle tension around the herbs that nerves, that sort of a thing. It's not that they're going to make you go to sleep. Just like Renew doesn't necessarily make you go to sleep. It helps your body relax enough to do better what you need to do. And so these kinds of nervine relaxants will therefore enhance vitality. Lemon balm, which is in the Renew, chamomile is in Renew, wood betony, wonderful herb, in the Veritizymes, passion flower in both Veritizymes and Renew, Damiana again as a relaxant as well as a tonic, um, which is in the Somaka XD, and Avena Sativa again, which is in the Vital. And then we have the stimulants. 
So stimulants, a lot of times it's easy to think of these as something that will just push blood around in your brain. Um, that's not really what exactly they do. That's a little reductionistic. And so a vena sativa, like Damiana, is all three kind of categories. So a vena sativa will relax your resistance to being stimulated. And so vital will help with that. Uh, it's, it essentially makes it so that you can do your work better. Rosemary, which is in the Soline Greens, Damiana, again, in the Solmaca Exidy, and Yerba Mate, which is in both the Cinemate and the Soul Complete Protein Shakes. So these are nervine stimulants. So you've got three ways that nervines can help. They can relax, they can stimulate, and they can just be used as tonics. So they work on the nervous system. So when we talk about the nervous system, sometimes it's hard to remember back to, you know, what for me was, um, I don't even know if we learned this in high school, honestly, uh, but now I think kids are learning it in third grade. My daughter came home with this assignment in biology that I thought I probably wasn't going to do that in college when I was taking my, my uh, college level genetics course. It was really something what they're doing now. So this is pretty basic stuff, uh, especially vis-a-vis -vis the uh, high school students of today. So your nervous system can, consists of the central nervous system and then the peripheral nervous system. So the central nervous system is your brain and your spinal cord. The peripheral nervous system is all those other nerves that come off of there. So you can see pictured the central nervous system on the left and then lots of nerves that come off of that spinal cord in the peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system is further divided into sensory and motor divisions. And so the things that send you signals like pain, vibration, temperature, that sort of a thing, those are sensory nerves. And then the way that you change your body, the way that you move, those could be motor nerves. And then the motor nerves are further divided, as you can see at the bottom of this page, into sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. And we talked a little bit about that last year. And so nervines will provide nutrition to all of that system. So you can see it's a pretty critical system that you want to be nourished. So there are plenty of vitamins and minerals. We're focusing particularly on the minerals today, but there are also some great vitamins in these uh, nervine tonics, uh, nervine herbs, avena sativa and nettle, that will directly nourish the nervous system. Now, before we get stuck in this idea that the only good that these herbs do is provide minerals, or the only good that they do is minerals plus vitamin A and maybe, you know, uh, relaxing kind of thing. Let's not forget that each of these herbs contains hundreds, probably thousands of unidentified components. We are nowhere even near being able to understand what a plant is and what a plant contains. We can identify a very small amount of what is in a plant. What we do is we try to isolate active ingredients. This is what uh, a lot of uh, typical science does. And then uh, take out those active ingredients and make drugs out of them. And so at Soul Naturals, we have a little different philosophy, which is the whole plant contains what the whole plant needs to contain. In other words, there are things that we typically identify as an active ingredient but that's really based on our, our level of knowledge, which is very poor. And so then there are other parts of that plant that are not known to be active or are not even known at all that will create the overall effect of the plant. And that effect, like we've talked about before, is more like a smorgasbord than it is like a one single thing. And so the body has an opportunity to interact with the plant and take from it what it needs. And so here when you've got a vena sativa and nettle as opportunities for the body to nourish itself and take into it minerals and vitamins that are helpful, there's much more to those plants than simply minerals and vitamins. So we will talk about the minerals, 
but I just want you to see these plants as amazing entities in themselves that are far more than what we're going to talk about. So nettle has a lot of vitamin A, a lot of it. Raw or blanched, it could, if you drink, a, um, if you take a quarter cup, 100% of your daily allowance of vitamin A out of just nettle. Now, if you're going to go harvest nettle, I recommend gloves because otherwise it will sting for a long time. My son figured that out in the garden a couple weeks ago and came in and told me that he had found nettles and I handed him a tube of AC cream and he quit talking about it. And I asked him if they still hurt because when if it was me, it would hurt all day. But he said no, one application was all he needed and I thought maybe that's cool if you're 14. Maybe that's the, the bonus of being 14, that's awesome. Anyway, so if you go out and find your nettles, use your uh, gloves and then you harvest them and you blanch them in order to get those stinging parts to calm down and then you eat a quarter cup you're going to have 100 percent of your vitamin a it might be easier to get it through vital that's sort of the way i prefer it because you know it's easier so nettle contains vitamin a and venus sativa also contains vitamin a a vitamins are important for the brain and the nerves um, these are also good sources of B vitamins, also critically important in nerve and in brain functioning. So let's talk a little bit more about a Venus sativa, which is the beautiful name for the oat plant. And so when we think of oats, we don't really think of oats in a romantic way. We think of them in kind of an oatmeal way, or like we think of the oatmeal guy. And that's about where we're stuck. But if you think about the oat plant in a medicinal way, it is a plant that is, is, ha, is truly amazing. And instead of just harvesting the oats, uh, the oat groats, and then you know rolling them and putting them in your oatmeal, this plant has been used um, in terms of using a tincture or using a tea. You know, there are lots of ways that people have used it. Um, and then before it's ripe, it's also really been uh, used in that, what they call that milky seed stage. And so there's about a week between um, when the plant be begins to develop this milkiness. So the seed top, what, what's happening is the plant is beginning to develop those oat, the seeds, the actual oatmeal, the groats, the grain part of it. But it's still soft. It's not quite mature yet. And so it's kind of milky on the inside. And and it's green, and the, the stalk or the, of the plant is still green. And so when it's uh, harvest, harvested then, uh, that's a very popular time for it to be harvested for uh, herbal use, those milky seed tops. Sometimes they use the straw too. In the vital, it's just the milky tops um, that are, are used. And so a Venus sativa is really known as a nervine because it not only nourishes our nerves nutritionally, but it also has a wonderful relaxing and soothing effect on people's uh, nervous system in terms of your emotional experience of your nerves. And so we say she's a very nervous person or he's, he has a problem with his nerves. Generally, we're talking about emotional issues, not um, about uh, things like I can't feel my toes. And so when you combine that kind of a nervine with adaptogens, you can take advantage of synergy that is very, very powerful. And so one of the things that I really appreciate about the Soul Vital is this combination of adaptogens with some wonderful other herbs that are, you know, some, most of them are nervine, uh, high medicinal value. So like I said, vitamin A is very important for the brain. A signaling molecule and so it will help growing adult animals regulate genes modulate neurogenesis which is growing new genes you know new genes happening uh, getting made uh, survival of neurons and what we call synaptic plasticity and so this is when so that your synapses those connections between one nerve ending and another so the messenger and the receiver of the messenger so that those can work together better Vitamin B also critical. Vitamin B deficiencies are common in many Americans. 
and they can produce a lot of what uh, looks like a lot of mental disorders that can often be cleared up with better uh, better administering of vitamin B. You got to watch uh, because sometimes people can't break down vitamin B. Vitamin B is one of those. Um, I'm speaking particularly of B12 and folate, which is B9, but all of the B vitamins really have uh, difficult, people can have difficulty breaking them down if they have some of the MTHFR genetic uh, um, influence. It's depending on what the actual gene is and whether you're homozygous or heterozygous um, is going to make a difference. But v, B vitamins are pretty critical to brain health. Getting them naturally, uh, getting them in nettle, in vena sativa, in herbs, much more bioavailable than uh, in, uh, you know, what you would buy at a basic drugstore. Calcium is one of the most important minerals that our body uh, includes, or because our, our body is full of calcium. Of course, it's the main constituent of our bones and teeth, but it also will regulate our blood pressure, regulates blood clotting, regulates nerve excitability. So a lot of times people with restless legs will benefit from more calcium as well as, uh, for example, more magnesium. It helps transmit nerve impulses. And it's important in that, in that uh, brain, any nerve exchange, increased sodium decreases calcium, decreases phosphorus. And if you want to increase absorption, you need some magnesium, which handily enough is right in there with uh, the rest of the plant. And then vitamin D. So if you're out in the sun harvesting your vena sativa and your nettle, you'll be absorbing vitamin D uh, most generally to help with that absorption. So calcium in the brain, critical. We talked about neuron cells, uh, releasing neurotransmitters. We talked about chemical messengers. Chromium is another important mineral for mind and for body, um, essential for insulin production. You, know, you may remember uh, maybe 10, 15 years ago, chromium picolinate was this big thing about blood sugar and insulin and weights. And so small deficiencies of chromium can raise blood sugar. It's used when you metabolize carbohydrates to help you break them down. What's interesting is that those of us in America must have a dietary deficiency that's across the board because we have a quarter of the amount of chromium in our tissues compared to Asians. And I think it's like a fifth compared to those in the Middle East. So we have very little comparatively to some of the other people in the rest of the world. So you want to look at how can I create this in my diet in a more regular way because chromium is important. Now, one article says chromium results in activity increases in the brain that are associated with improved memory. So beyond just uh, raising uh, it or lowering your blood sugar, it also helps with memory. Magnesium, critical. Magnesium is a critical, all of these are, but magnesium in particular um, you need it for making DNA, for making RNA, making proteins, making enzymes, helps regulate muscle contraction. It helps you with how to get the other vitamins utilized. So we talked some time ago about vitamins not working by themselves. They work together in a constellation with other things. And magnesium is very often one of those other things. Um, and working together with calcium, the magnesium-calcium ratio and kind of delicate band dance is is really important and we often forget magnesium only one percent of your magnesium is stored in the blood so a blood test won't tell you very much about magnesium what you want to look at is how much magnesium is intracellular so often people will look in the red blood cell to see how much magnesium is there that might tell you a little bit more magnesium is one of those Minerals, the body will try and compensate always. And so if you have reduced magnesium, for example, in your heart, then you're going to have increased amounts of it in the blood that is trying to compensate for the decreased amounts in the heart. You know, maybe it'll travel to the heart and get there. And so if you measure the magnesium in the blood, you may not get the correct idea about how much magnesium really you do have on board in places where it is useful. Um, magnesium strengthens nerve endings, particularly in the hippocampus, where you have uh, that connection between emotion and memory. So the hippocampus is part of your limbic system where 
uh, you it can remember things that have to do with emotionally based memories. Magnesium protects you against degenerative diseases, improves your mood. There's a great study about how, uh, I think it's seven weeks, or maybe it was seven days. Oh my goodness, I can't remember which. I think it was seven days of high levels of magnesium supplementation helped reduce uh, depression significantly. Not in everyone, of course, because not everyone is, is, has low magnesium and that's the reason why they're depressed. But some people that comes, it comes up that low magnesium will create some depression. So magnesium will often improve people's mood, usually in, uh, reduces anxiety, and of course can help with headaches, insomnia, restless legs, sleeping better, all of those things. Manganese helps produce connective tissue, important for energy metabolism. And it's similar to iron in the way manganese behaves uh, with other minerals. And manganese in the brain helps alleviate PMS. So not just one part, but mood swings and depression headaches and irritability, manganese can, can help you with that. So you might wanna reach for a little extra vital on those days because I don't wanna go find my manganese out in a rock somewhere. I would, I'll take it in the vital. Low levels associated with more vulnerability to epilepsy. So, so again, you can see that these nerves are helpful for providing nourishment to the whole nervous system. And manganese is a critical component of thyroxine, which is one of our thyroid hormones that's very, very important for running our entire body. And potassium, second highest abundant mineral in plants. That's, there's a lot of potassium around for good reasons. So it helps your nels, it helps your cells nourish and cleanse. It does this through what's called osmotic equilibrium. And so as it, as it increases outside the cell, increases inside the cell, decreases. And so it maintains this equilibrium that carries in and out of the cell what is needed in and what is needed out. So you've got this cleansing and nourishing action through osmotic equilibrium. Helps with nerve impulse conduction, potassium. It's one, you know, along with calcium in the brain like we talked about. Also critical for helping nerves signal each other outside of the brain in a, as, in a partnership with sodium. And low potassium, this is something important to think about, when you don't have enough potassium, then your nerves need more stimulation before they end up firing. And so you might have to keep trying harder or might have to keep you know, pushing harder, tapping harder, whatever it is that you have to keep trying to do harder before you can get the actual behavior to happen. Potassium might help you. And selenium. Selenium stimulates glutathione. Glutathione, as you may remember, is one of the primary helps to our body in terms of detoxification. It prevents oxidation. It protects DNA from structural damage. Selenium is similar um, in its behavior to vitamin E and to sulfur. It doesn't mean you can substitute, but it, it has some similar benefits. Helps your blood produce antibodies and protects the heart. Selenium in the brain is required for better mood. Low selenium is associated with cognitive decline. You need it to make your thyroid hormones, to metabolize your thyroid hormones. So selenium is pretty important as well. And zinc. Zinc, you think of in terms of the immune system, and you think of often in terms of skin, nails, hair, tissue, tissue repair. Um, I know someone who's about to have surgery, and so I said, please start zinc. Zinc will help you with recovery quite a bit. And, you know, what a great way to start zinc um, by starting vital, because if vital contains so many more things than just a simple zinc pill would contain. Help your immune system, help your blood sugar, support your liver health. If you have low levels of zinc, you can feel run down, you can feel tired like you feel when you have low levels of a lot of things. Um, and so, and again, another plug here for whole plant use. If, if you're trying to figure out what the one thing is that will help you and you're doing single minerals or single vitamins or or a single nutrient in some way, 
it's a lot easier to just take a bunch of whole plants and put them in a drink and drink it. <laughs> okay, next one. So zinc in the brain, if you're low in zinc, vulnerable to seizures, improving again, learning and memory. The most concentrated metals in the brain are zinc and iron, and we know how those can be quite good for you. You can have too many, but uh, it, people are more likely to not have enough than to have too many. It's kind of hard. So if your body's working appropriately, it's kind of hard to get too many. Okay, so let's take a look. Now that we've gone through all those minerals that are, that are necessary, the minerals in the sativa min include as rich sources of minerals. The nettle has lots of the minerals we just talked about. A vena sativa, lots of the minerals we just talked about. Dandelion, burdock, lots of the minerals we talked about. So you can see that sativa min is a wonderful rich source of these critical minerals for nerve help, nervine minerals uh, to help restore, help to with functioning and help nourish these nerves. We didn't really talk much about dandelion and, and burdock, so I wanted to add this in uh, just to, as a reminder that your brain and your liver work together so beautifully and that if your liver is clogged, your brain is fogged. That's the saying that I keep in my mind a lot. When the liver is clogged, the brain is fogged. And so when you have um, the ability to help keep your liver cleaner with things like dandelion and burdock, then it makes it easier for these other nervines to work to do their job as well. And so dandelion and burdock, fantastic foods for stimulating bile, uh, helping the liver continue to do its job to be clean and well-functioning. Uh, so they're there as a support to this overall um, nervous system benefit, emotionally, mentally, physically. There's a wonderful synergy, like I mentioned, in nervines and adaptogens that is created in the vital drink. They complement each other. They can't, however, substitute for a life that includes a variety of foods, a variety of healthy foods, exercise, sleep, not too much stress. So you will benefit from them, but you can't substitute adaptogens or vital only for all of your health. You can't say, well, I'm not going to leave behind my very unhealthy lifestyle. I will only drink vital. You, it, it will help you a little bit, but it won't help you as much as it could if the rest of your life is in alignment with being able to help your body receive this kind of nourishment. And so if you've got a lot of other stuff competing for, uh, for minerals, for uh, um, receptor sites, you know, if you've got a lot of other things that are competing for a receptor site for your body to receive something, then it will be harder for you to use it, right? And so think about what an opportunity we have with this combination, this synergistic combination of nervines, adaptogens with the sativa min and the adaptable and the chlorophyll, all of this together. This is a great opportunity for your body. And so get out of your way so that your body can truly receive the whole thing. 